Most of the people they do ride bikes see, just around the mountain, not on the mountain. And uh, most of the paths are not in good condition for mm -hmm. riding. Riding a bicycle is not a good idea. Southern Africa is still pretty much a blank canvas, mountain bike wise. So it's all about exploring new mountains and new trails. When I first heard about Mount Mulanji, being a kind of secret trekking paradise, I knew. That's it. Where there are hikers, there should be good trails. But we'll have to find out. We were glad to see that Malawi is a real bicycle country. Everybody is riding bikes. Bikes are the general means of transport. They're even used as taxis. For about one dollar, you could get a lift to the next village, just sitting on the rack. Malawi is a small country nestled between Zambia, Tanzania and Mozambique. It has roughly the size of Austria and Switzerland combined. It is one of the poorest countries and its economy is mainly based on small-scale agriculture. Around Mulanji, tea is the main product. It is often called the warm heart of Africa and we quickly realize why. People really are unbelievably friendly. We've planned a three-day trip into the mountain and visit the local market for the groceries. Not quite surprisingly, our bikes are always an attraction. Especially the suspension. But with your bicycles, we can't do that. Yeah, yeah, sure. Yeah. And these are really nice ones. Yeah, yeah. I love yeah. them. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Some people from the local community will accompany us on our trip. We have hired a guide, a cook, and two porters. So the lineup is complete, and finally, we're ready to go. As we hike our bikes up, it looks really promising. The trails are well used and perfectly trodden out. Duncan, our guide, is a teacher from the village and also knows the mountain really well. Jungle road is not used often. Ah, so okay, yeah, yeah then, then yeah, we done, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Because we, for us, it's always best if there's lots of people walking. Yeah, yeah. We discuss different options. There are various trails down from the plateau. We meet a lot of people on the way up. There are people working on the mountain clearing vegetation, collecting firewood. They walk up and down every day. You take a bag from the bottom to the mountain. What are yeah. you going to do with it? <laughs> the Mulanji Massive is about 30 kilometers east to west and consists of a plateau with the highest peaks reaching around 3,000 meters. Our first goal is a prominent peak with a spectacular west face. It's called Chamba Peak. The vegetation is cleared along some lines to control the bushfires in the dry season. These so-called fire breaks are perfect to ride and to cover distance. There are 10 huts on the massive, maintained by the Mountain Club of Malawi. 
But the one that I need, she's the one my heart desire. When she turn up by fire. And the huts are amazing. Without them, such multi-day trips would be a totally different game. We asked Duncan about the details of Timber Peak. He tells us that close to the summit, we'd have to expect a little climbing. Next to the shower, two lone trees catch our attention. As Duncan explains, these are the precious Mulanji cedar trees. They are the last two cedars on Jumbo Plateau. People cut down everything. It's very easy to get the people who can buy it. That's why a lot of people come from the village, cut all cedar trees illegally, just to get, to get, to get money. Yeah. If we look around, there's no cedar trees. Melange cedar, it's a unique tree that's only found on the mountain. It uh, grows very tall, about 50 meters, takes a long time to grow that height. It has a very valuable wood, um, which is sought, highly sought after, and so because of that it's threatened. This is Carl Brusser from the Mulanji Mountain Conservation Trust, a trust which was founded to protect the mountain. We will meet him again later. It is critical because uh, the cloud forests on the mountain are dominated by it, so once we lose Mulanji cedar, it'll affect the ecology of those forests and therefore everything that lives within it. The steep part of our ascent to Jumbe Peak begins and the visible trail disappears into granite rocks and bushes. The landscape becomes completely unreal. All of a sudden we look up. Going straight up. Is that where we're supposed to go up? So, leave the bikes here. Yeah. Okay, that was kind of an easy decision Holy moly. to leave the bikes behind. Two vertical, even further rider. Jumbe yeah. Peak, riding Jumbe Peak. From the summit of Jumbe, you have a wide view across the flat savanna. It's just great. Chamber Peak is just one of about 20 peaks of the Mulanji Plateau that was formed 130 million years ago by solidified magma. Due to its elevation and its geographic location, Mulanji receives a remarkable rainfall, up to 1800 millimeters per year. Further down, the riding challenges were waiting. The granite slabs, even without a trail, can be really good for biking when you've learned how to read the train. We've had a similar experience last year in Namibia on the Brandberg. Riding the slopes of Chamba was a really good experience. We continue our descent down Skyline Path. 
the most direct and steepest connection back down to Likabula. And it's really because the trails are so well used and trodden out that they're so good for biking. And that's quite unique in Africa. Skyland Path was indeed steep and fairly demanding. And it got faster and faster the further we got down. And then all of a sudden onto the trail right in front of me appears a little boy running down. And the perfect ride had a perfect ending. A swim in the beautiful rock pools at the end of the valley. After the waterfalls, we actually meet illegal sawyers. They have cut the logs already into planks, which they had been carrying down for days. Ababa, uh, 5,500. That's around $10. Obviously a tiny fraction of what they would be sold later on. The lack of employment, poverty, high population. This is what makes the people to destroy the mountain. There's no way which you can do in order to save cedar unless the government take a part. We were back from the mountain and just wanted to take a photo of Mwanji. We've always been fascinated by the elegant way people carry stuff on their head. Turned out, it's not as easy as it looks. African vibes never stopped to amaze us. <laughs> the lodge where we stayed wasn't exactly fancy, but definitely not cheap for Malawi standards. Yeah. We were here for four nights. Yeah. So uh, how much do we owe you? Uh, you owe me 446,500 quite, yeah? Inflation is definitely an issue in Malawi. So the currency is constantly devalued and it can be quite a challenge to pay a couple of nights for five people all at once. On our way to the village, we ride along some local cyclists and our ride turns into a spontaneous race. We don't have a chance really, but it was just great fun. The common bikes in Malawi are Chinese brands. Rugged steel frames, rugged wheels, heavy as hell, but they can take the beating of the African roads. And the guys are in shape. <laughs> we stopped by the typical African craft market. Come down the price, no problem. You can, you can come I down. can, I can, can come yeah. down. Yeah. The regional speciality 
is of course cedar. The special property of the tree is its unique oil that makes the wood so durable. This oil also gives the cedar its distinctive good smell, one of the reasons it's so highly valued. The problem with the cedar obviously goes hand in hand with other problems on the mountain. In the village, we ran across Peter, a retired engineer from Germany, now settled in Mulanji. The Abholzung is enorm. There are many gegenden here in, in Malawi, especially in Mangochi, they have fast keine Häu Bäume mehr. This is also so, that the Leute sogar in the Nationalpark reingehen and dort Bäume Holz holen. The problem is, a schnell wachsender Baum, zum Beispiel the Blue Gum Tree, ungefähr nach 10, 12 Jahren wird er gefällt und da bringt er ungefähr zwischen 100 und 200 Kilo Feuerholz und ist in einen Tag verbraucht. Wie kann ich denn die Abholzung bekämpfen, wenn ich nur aufforste? Peter has an idea to fight the severe deforestation problem. He developed a cooking stove that uses only a fraction of the firewood that the traditional three-stone cooking method uses. Das Holz, was ich an einem drei steine brauche, am einen Tag, mit diesem Holz kann ich fünf Tage mit Alle verkochen. Und vor allem, wir haben den halt im Haus drin, den Ofen, aber es ist rauchfrei. Das größte Problem des Rauches ist, dass die Frau und die Kinder dort in der Küche sind, weil die Kinder sind meistens um die Mutter rum. Ja, und die kriegen den ganzen Rauch mit und es ist etwa das gleiche wie 30 Zigaretten. Und das, sitzt, das Kind sitzt da jeden Tag drin. Tuberkulose. Three stone fire. You see it? The stoves are made of the local clay soil and can easily be manufactured by hand. This could actually be a crucial key for a stove to work for Africa. We want to take out our public. Wenn alles gut organisiert ist, werden acht Öfen am Tag gebaut. Und die werden sofort verkauft. Wie heiße Semmeln. Ja. Before the Department of Forestry, they employ much people to work around Mlanji Mountain and protect everything in Mlanji Mountain. But now because there are some organizations like Mlanji Mountain Conservation Trust, so the Department of Forestry, of, of forestry they don't receive, don't receive any fund to help the mountain. So all the fund is from outside, they just go straight to Mlanji Mountain Conservation Trust. Now we got really interested in the cedar story. So we visit Carl Brusser, the director of the Mulanji Mountain Conservation Trust, the MMCT. We're an endowment-based organization. We've been given some money. Um, we have about $8 million of our own. And we work with other donors and many other partners and communities around the mountain to see where we can um, assist with the conservation of the ecology on the mountain. Uh, at the moment, we have community groups working on the mountain to put in fire breaks, uh, do some early burning. Some six months ago, Mlanji Mountain Conservation Office was closed because see, people, people in the village, they said, no, you are working nothing, so let's close your office. Yeah. We were quite surprised to hear that not everybody is so delighted with the work of the MMCT. I know only that they were dass die Kapula die Leute äh, vor Gericht gegangen sind. We also want to listen to the community's point of view. And we arrange a meeting with the chief of Chete, the community at the foothills of the mountain. We asked him about the opinion of his people, but we were not really sure if he had understood our question, because he invited us to a dance. You are doing good and you want to dance, you are welcome, feel oh, yeah, free okay. and join them, yeah. okay. dancing together, okay. Yeah. okay?
all of a sudden the music stopped and Maxwell got serious. Now we could talk about the mountain. Maxwell and his community seem to be very disappointed with the works of the MMCT. It's very difficult in nowadays, especially when the coming of MMCT. MMCT does not teach us how can people protect that trees. They not give us another alternative. Because of the critical population pressure on the mountain's resources, we work with community groups to give them uh, access to opportunities you know, that can enhance their livelihood without being dependent on the mountain. But now you can see, this is 16 years when MCTU have been here. But here, even in this community, there are no any benefit from that MMCTU. The problem is that MMCTU come here, we are not involved us. They take somebody from Kalonga, which is not know what the benefit from lunch, who is not knowing the importance of cedar. Okay? People here, we are suffered, so they are going there, cutting down trees. Yet if we there we take the people from this community and our guys do this work together, I think that cedar will be protected. A respected spokeswoman stepped forward and really hit the message. That mountain is us. So because of that, <laughs> we get right yeah. We were really impressed by this presentation. The people of the communities really care about the mountain because they understand that it is their livelihood. So mountain is help us in so many ways. Fire will do, water as you will see, there are so many, a lot of livers there. So people benefit from that, yeah. We decide to visit the mountain a second time. This time, we would explore the plateau from the north, from Palombe. And again, we witness cedar planks being carried down at broad daylight. We pass one of the cedar tree nurseries of the MMCT. It seems like a good idea to grow cedar seedlings before they are planted back into the ecosystem. But apparently, as Duncan tells us, it doesn't really work. The cedar doesn't grow like that. No one knows exactly why. It grow, but not like big like this. It's small like this. That's all. The office said that they receive fund from donors, but the plan what they have is just to plant cedar. Yeah, but as I said, cedar is not it's not need a help from a person. They just grow itself. Yeah. Since um, the office the office came, they just plant cedar, plant cedar, plant cedar at Chambe. But now if you can go to Chambe, there's no a single tree of cedar which planted with uh, Mlanji Mountain Conservation Trust. The reforestation of the cedar is number one priority. That also meant that the pine forest on Chambe Plateau was cut down and burnt to open space for the cedar. Now, there are no trees on the plateau and heavy rain washed down the ash and contaminated the water of the villages, which in turn upset the communities and they pressed charges against the MMCT. It's hard to overlook the negative human impact on the mountain. Forests are burning. There are natural fires too, of course, but it seems to be a common hunting method to start a fire and drive the animals towards the traps. Letztendlich sind mehr als 50 Prozent der Zeder verschwunden. Es ist abgeschnitten und in Bretter gesägt. Ich weiß ein paar Leute, die es gekauft haben oder die es veranlasst haben, aber die Namen möchte ich jetzt nicht nennen. Es sind also keine einfachen Leute. Es ist meines Erachtens Nichts anderes als Korruption. Behind some rocks, we find a hidden saw pit. Other saw pits have simply been installed in the open. 
And again, people are carrying cedar planks. They briefly consider to hide from us, but then they just carry on. The logging of the cedar looks somehow organized. For illegal operations, the loggers are moving around quite relaxed. The activities are completely undisguised. There is outside organized criminal enterprise that is responsible for the timber extraction of the mountain. This is not local consumption. This is consumption organized from outside and these planks are just disappearing out of the country uh, without any value added. Where is it going? It's government you know where is it exactly. Because some of the government members we use that as a constructive buildings. I think we have a profile that many people would say that you know we're somehow responsible for the state of the mountain, but uh, we have a very small staff here, and our primary role is just to um, assist those organizations working on the mountain uh, and around the mountain. So we, we are really trying to work very closely with government at the moment to, to um, upgrade their capacity to do the work that's necessary. We ride across the plateau, first to Sambani Hut, then further on to Tuchila, where we stay for the night. It's one of the most scenic huts on the mountain. On the hut, we meet an interesting group of NGOs spending the weekend hiking on the mountain. At the fireplace, they told us stories about people who disappeared under mysterious circumstances and other creepy stuff. It was a real fun night. We came to visit the wonderful mountain in Malawi and to discover some good trails for biking. It couldn't have been better. But we've also been confronted with the darker side of the mountain. The forest and the cedar in particular are not in a good state. More than half of it is already gone. The conservation efforts are not adequate. The communities are not properly involved. What could possibly solve this complicated situation? That's why I say government, MMCT, and the community, they must work together. In so doing, people will stop doing that. Because community will take responsibility, government take responsibility, and MOMC will take uh, responsibility. The oven project for sure looks like a perfect approach to save firewood. Maybe a small scale tourism with hiking or even biking tourism might be a basis, a sustainable mode of income. Give the people an alternative, a reason to protect the mountain and the cedar. So we really have become enchanted by the Mulanji trails. For us, it's the perfect riding terrain. And so many more trails yet to be explored, we'd be glad to come back for sure. When the visitors come, we just uh, escort you to the mountain, and after a while, I receive money. So that money I go to my family and get what we need. It's also a part of uh, protect the mountain. Mm -hmm.